How's it going everybody? This is Manny from LowTech. The RG351V has finally arrived, so today we're going to do an unboxing, go over my initial impressions, do a little bit of gameplay, take a nice look at the screen on this unit because that's one of the highlights of this unit is the screen and we'll compare it to the RG351P screen. So let's jump right into it. Let's start out with the specs. So the specs of the RG351V are as follows. The CPU is the RK3326 processor that clock speeds from 1.3 to 1.5 gigahertz. And this is the same CPU that is in the RG351P. The GPU is the Mali G31 MP2, also in the RG351P. The RAM is one gigabyte, just like the RG351P. Now where things become different is obviously the form factor and the display itself. The display is a three and a half inch, 640 by 480 IPS display. And the aspect ratio is four to three, which is perfect for retro gaming. The unit comes with two OTG ports. Another big highlight of this device is it has two SD card slots. One is labeled as internal, one is labeled as external. So one would be for your operating system files, the other would be for ROMs and other external files that you want to transfer back and forth from your PC to the device. Another change that's also an improvement is that the Wi-Fi is now built in, so you no longer need a dongle to access your Wi-Fi network. And finally, the unit comes with a 4000 milliamp hour battery. So again, to summarize the highlights of this device, the display, the aspect ratio being four to three, two SD card slots and built-in Wi-Fi are definitely the key highlights of this device. So now we're gonna move into the unboxing. I did speed it up just a little bit to get the box initially open and get the RG351V out of the box. The First thing that came to my mind when I had this device in my hand is that once again, this Ambernic device doesn't feel cheap. It's not hollow. It's got a little bit of heft to it. I do like the little bit of grit that it has on the plastic. And the other things that you'll have in the box is your wipes, your screen protector, USB-A to USB-C cable, and your instruction manual getting started guide. So now that it's out of the box, let's take a closer look. On the right side, you have your power button, reset button, and your two SD card slots. And it's just really cool that they decided to go with two SD cards in this device. It really makes it convenient when you want to change out your ROMs. On the bottom of the device, you have your two OTG ports and a headphone jack. On the left side of the device, you have your volume up and down button. So looking over this device, the build quality is very good, something that I've come to expect from Ambernic. On the bottom here, you'll see that everything is labeled. So you have your OTG DC, regular OTG, and then your internal and external SD card. Now let's take a closer look at our analog stick and our buttons. The first thing I wanted a closer look at was the L1, L2, R1, and R2 buttons and how they're laid out and how comfortable it is to use. So it's kind of hard to get this angle, but you basically have your entire finger cover each of them and how you lean into your finger is basically how you will press either the L1 or L2 or R1 and R2. This implementation of these buttons does work, but it's a bit uncomfortable. I really wish that the bottom half of this device was a little bit larger. My hands definitely do feel a little bit crammed and a little awkward with this layout. The A, B, and X, Y buttons feel good to push down. I have no complaints there. Moving on to the analog stick, it's definitely the same stick that's in the RG351P. I like the way it feels, so I'm happy with it. The D-pad also feels good, and it also is not loose. It doesn't jiggle around. The start and select buttons also are plastic. They're not all rubber, so they're not overly squishy, which I also do like. So I'm happy with everything so far. Let's fire this thing up. So my battery out of the box did not have a full charge, so I did throw it on the charger to get it up to 100% before proceeding. The unit comes with EMU Elec pre-installed. It also has a handful of ROMs for a bunch of different consoles. I immediately noticed that the display on this device is much more crisp. So we're doing this side-by-side -side comparison with the RG351P's screen. You immediately can tell the difference in resolution, that the 351V has a higher resolution screen. You could also tell that its screen is definitely warmer than the RG351P screen. Now let's take a look at Sonic Adventure running on both devices at the same time. Just seeing these games run side-by-side -side really shows you how much better the 351V screen is than the 351P's. So now it's time to sit back and relax. We're going to go through some gameplay. We're going to look at a little bit N64, PS1, Dreamcast, and Game Boy Advance.
So to wrap up this video, let's go over some pros and cons of the RG351V. Some pros, you got two SD card slots. That makes it really convenient to move ROMs to and from your computer. Built-in Wi-Fi eliminates the need for a dongle. You have a larger and higher resolution screen with a native aspect ratio of 4 to 3. Now the cons, the device will be potentially uncomfortable depending on the size of your hands. The trigger button layout, although pretty ingenious, you will inevitably push the wrong button because it's pretty much your fingers leaning in certain ways to push the L1, L2, R1, R2. Another big drawback is that you're not really getting a CPU, GPU, or RAM upgrade with this device, which if that had been the case, this device would have been even more enticing. And one other drawback, which isn't the end of the world, you only have one analog stick. So would I recommend purchasing and or upgrading to this device? If you're looking for a better visual experience, I would say definitely upgrade. If you do not have a device like this and you're new to the market, this is one to strongly consider. If you have a device but you're really looking to get better performance, then I would wait till later this year to see what devices come to the market that have CPU, RAM, and GPU upgrades. So this was just a quick review. I've only had the device for a couple days now. I do plan on doing some testing just for the sake of the visuals, not so much performance. The performance is not going to be any different because, again, the internal components besides the screen are all the same as the RG351P. It's only a matter of time before Arc OS, 351 Elec, and Retro Arena hit this device. So I'll also be doing testing with that. So stay tuned for these future videos. I appreciate everybody watching. If you enjoyed the video, if it was informative, please hit that like and subscribe button for me. I really appreciate that. Thank you, and I hope everybody has a great day.